Okay, so you sent in Introduction to Agricultural Sciences. And uh, I got to say, that sounds pretty intense. It does sound pretty heavy, doesn't it? Yeah, like a textbook. It is a textbook, actually. Uh, yes. Okay, all right. Yeah. So like, are we going to get grilled on plant biology later? Right. Or? No, <laughs> quizzes, I promise. Okay, good. But it is a really interesting book. You know, we often take agriculture for granted, but... It's true, though. I mean, like, I don't think about it that much. Right. But this book, it goes deep into how crucial agriculture is for like everything yeah. the food we eat obviously but also the economy yeah that's the thing about this book it's not just about like growing food it's about food security which feels super relevant right now with like oh absolutely yeah especially with climate change and a growing global population making sure everyone has access to safe and nutritious food is it's huge yeah and this book really digs into that and it's not just about like the food itself, it connects agriculture to the global economy in a way I never really... Right. Think about it. Agriculture, it's not just farmers. It's an entire system. You've got processing, distribution research. Yeah. All of that creates jobs. And then there's international trade. It's like this massive chain reaction. I never thought about it like that before. And the book doesn't stop there. It also talks about how crucial agriculture is for managing resources like water and land. Absolutely. Like the section on irrigation was fascinating. It's just the sheer amount of water that crops need. It's a delicate balance to make sure we're meeting those needs while also conserving water. For sure. And speaking of balance, the book even ties agriculture to things like social well-being, which I'll admit I was skeptical about at first, but... I can see that. It's not something you'd immediately think of. Right. But when you really think about it, having a stable food supply often means having more stable communities. It can prevent a lot of unrest and social problems. Yeah, it's all interconnected. And speaking of connections, did you know that the way we grow food today is directly linked to something that happened like thousands of years ago? You're talking about like the shift from hunting and gathering to actually cultivating crops. Exactly. The Neolithic Revolution. Mind-blowing, right? Yeah. Like this one change completely reshaped human civilization. Exactly. Yeah. Imagine going from constantly searching for food to intentionally planting and harvesting it. This book says it started around 10,000 BC. That's over 12,000 years ago. That is wild, and we didn't stop there. We <laughs> did not. This book also talks about the Green Revolution in the 20th century. Oh, uh, yeah. Which, like, if you've ever seen those pictures of, like, fields just bursting with grain, that was the Green Revolution in action. Exactly. It was all about boosting crop yields to feed a booming population. Exactly. So we had like the Neolithic Revolution and then the Green Revolution. Each with its own set of advantages and challenges. Absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of approaching agriculture, let, let's get into like the nitty gritty, yeah. the science of it all. Okay. I will say when I first saw this whole chapter on fundamental principles of plant science, I was like, oh boy, here comes the textbook jargon. Yeah. It does sound a bit intimidating at first. It does. But understanding even just the basics of how plants work, it's actually incredibly fascinating. Okay, so like what's going on inside a plant? Break it down for us. Well, the book does a great job of like breaking down plant anatomy. Oh, so yeah. you've got roots, stems, leaves. They all work together. Roots anchor the plant and absorb water. And nutrients, stems provide support and transport those nutrients and leaves. That's where the magic of photosynthesis happens. Photosynthesis. That's how plants use sunlight to turn carbon dioxide and water into energy. Uh -huh. like their version of making a meal or something. Yeah, and it's not just about feeling themselves either, photosynthesis. It's the foundation of pretty much all life on Earth. Plants are the primary producers. They create the oxygen we breathe and the food that we eat. It's easy to forget how crucial plants are. Mm -hmm. Like, we take them for granted. We really do. And speaking of amazing plant abilities, this book dives into genetics. Oh, yeah. Which, like, I never thought I'd be so fascinated by plant DNA. It's incredible. Understanding plant genetics, it's key to developing new crop varieties that are more resistant to diseases, pests, or even harsh climates. So from hunter-gatherers to, like, manipulating plant DNA, it's clear we've come a long way. We have come a long way. But how does this all play out in the real world? Like, what actually goes into growing the food on our plates? That's where we get into the hands-on aspects of agriculture, crop cultivation, and management. Yeah, and this is where the book really shines. It's like a behind-the-scenes look at what farmers deal with every day. It covers everything, from selecting the right location and preparing the soil to the complexities of planting irrigation, fertilization, and pest control. It's a lot more complex than most people realize. Right. Like, I feel like most people don't think about all the little detail. Exactly. Like, even choosing where to plant a field, it's way more complicated than you might think. It's not just about finding open space. 
Farmers have to consider things like sun exposure, the type of soil, even the direction of the wind. Wow. I, I guess it is like picking the right spot for your garden, but like on a massive scale. Exactly. And with much higher stakes. And then there's the soil itself. Oh, yeah. The book really dives into that whole world beneath our feet. It's easy to forget about when you're looking at a field of crops, but healthy soil is crucial for successful farming. So what makes soil healthy? Well, it's not just dirt. It's actually teeming with life. Microorganisms, fungi, bacteria, all playing a role in plant health. Wow. A whole ecosystem down there. Exactly. The book uses this great analogy of soil being like a bank account. Yeah. You have to make deposits of nutrients to keep it healthy and productive. Oh, I like that. So yeah. it's all about balance. Giving back to the soil as much as we take from it. Exactly. And speaking of balancing acts, let's talk about water. Okay. Irrigation. That section blew my mind. I had no idea how much went into watering crops. It's a delicate dance, for sure, especially with water becoming increasingly scarce in many parts of the world. Right. Are there ways to, like, make it more efficient? Absolutely. The book talks about how some traditional irrigation methods can be really wasteful. You lose a lot of water to evaporation or runoff. That makes sense. Yeah. So what's the alternative? Well, there are things like drip irrigation, which the book explains delivers water directly to the roots minimizes waste, maximizes efficiency. It's like giving each plant a personalized drink or something. Exactly. And speaking of getting specific, let's talk about pests. Oh boy, those insects and diseases that can wipe out entire crops. Exactly, it's a constant battle for farmers. So how do you even begin to control those? Well, the book talks about this approach called integrated pest management. It's a more holistic approach instead of just spraying pesticides everywhere. Okay, so what does that involve? It's about using a combination of methods, like introducing beneficial insects that prey on pests, rotating crops to disrupt their life cycles, and even using technology to monitor and predict outbreaks. It's like a multi-pronged defense strategy for your crops. Exactly. And speaking of strategy, the book also gets into this challenge of balancing yield with environmental impact. Right, because you can't just, like, squeeze every last ounce of food out of the land. Yeah. You have to think long term. Exactly. It's not just about how much food we can produce, but how we can do it sustainably. And that actually brings us to what I think is one of the most exciting parts of the book, the future of food production. You know, all the stuff about, like, tech-savvy fields and robots and AI. Yeah, that whole section had me hooked. It's like something out of a sci-fi movie, but it's happening right now. So what exactly are we talking about here? We're talking drones flying over fields, collecting data on plant health and soil conditions, sensors monitoring everything from temperature to humidity, and AI crunching all that data to help farmers make better decisions. It's like taking the guesswork out of farming. Exactly. Yeah, it's bringing farming into the digital age. Exactly. And it's not just about efficiency either. The book talks about how all this tech can make farming more sustainable too. Oh, really? Yeah. Less water waste, fewer chemical inputs. It's a win-win for everyone, even the planet. So you're saying robots could save the world. Hey, you never know. But on a more serious note, all this talk about the future of food, it's exciting, but it also makes you think about those big challenges facing agriculture, right? Totally. Like, even with all this amazing tech, can we really produce enough food for everyone? in a sustainable way. Exactly. And this book, it doesn't shy away from those challenges. Climate change, a growing global population, the need to do more with less. But it also highlights how much innovation is happening. True. It's like this book is cautiously optimistic. Yeah, I'd say so. It's a message of hope mm -hmm. that we can use our ingenuity and technology to not just overcome these challenges, but create a more sustainable and resilient food system for everyone. For sure. And speaking of hope, one thing that really stood out to me was the part about renewable energy in agriculture. Oh, yeah. That was a cool section. Like using solar panels to power irrigation systems or wind turbines on farms. Yeah. Exactly. It's like closing the loop, creating a self-sustaining system. Totally. Well, we've covered a ton of ground in this deep dive. We really have. It's wild to think it all started with one textbook. I know, right? <laughs> so before we wrap up, were there any other big takeaways that surprised you? You know, I thought I knew a thing or two about agriculture, but this book really opened my eyes to just how massive and complex the global food system is. It's easy to forget how connected it is to everything. The environment, the economy, technology, social justice. Seriously, food touches every aspect of our lives. It really does. And for me, I think the biggest takeaway was just how fast things are changing in agriculture. We talked about the Neolithic Revolution, mm. the Green Revolution. 
but it feels like we're on the brink of another major shift with all this new technology. It's kind of mind blowing when you think about it. Yeah. It's like the future of food is being shaped right now. It really is. And speaking of the future of food, we can't end this deep dive without leaving our listeners with something to ponder. Oh, you're right. We need a final thought provoking question. Okay. So here it is for everyone listening. After learning all of this, after getting this glimpse into the world of agriculture, what do you think the future of food should look like? It's a big question, but an important one. It really is. Thanks for joining us on this journey from farm to future. Absolutely. And a huge thank you to you for sending in this fascinating book. We'll see you in the next episode.